Right now, Threes Up family is with Kobe Savage, the legend, the kinfolk, the good guy, man. How you doing this uh, this afternoon? Man, chilling, man. I'm doing great, to be honest with you, bro. I'm doing great. It's a, it's a blessed morning, man. We're blessed afternoon. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Always good to see you. Yeah, yeah. It's always good to see you, too, man. I just want to kind of, like, just get... Kind of like get the Threes Up family a background on like who you are, how long you've been doing hip hop, um, especially in East Texas, and how it's been kind of getting you through, you know, the years. Man, I've been doing music as far back as I can remember, bro. You know what I'm saying? I was thinking about that earlier today, man. Like pretty much all of my adult life, I've been involved in music. You know, um, started in in uh, Commerce, Texas, man, right there on High Street, man, with my bro A Roy. You know what I'm saying? He started network, Northeast Texas, putting in work, and he was just rapping, man, on the corners, on the block, late nights, freestyling. I always loved music, had the appreciation of hip hop and, and, and underground music, you know? And being from the South, from the country, we just was like, yo, we got something to say too, we want our voice to be heard. And, and we was always sharpening each other's swords, man, you know, lyrically or whatever. Because during that time, growing up, you know, it was a lot of legends, man. Yeah. And Biggie and Nas and Jay Z mm -hmm. and UGK, Outkast, yeah. you know, some of the greatest UG, um, A Ball, MJG. So, lyrically, had to come with it and be talking about something. That was kind of the thing. So, but I started back then, man. Yeah. Back in the day. And it's like School you. School bus. Yeah, yeah. And it's like you, you did that, and it's like. The time goes up and it's like you look on YouTube, you doing shows, you open up for like le actual actual legends, you yeah. open up for yeah. them, taking pictures with them. So like when did that, when did it speed up, when did you start seeing traction and you start saying, okay, I think I really need to do this like full time? Well, um, I would say, uh, you know, when I came to the D, you know, we started doing music downtown with Kundalini and the Metro Music uh, Movement. Um, Kung was putting us in some pretty good predicaments, man. You know, we was performing in front of some nice crowds, very underground crowds. You know, everybody from Dallas know about the Deep Ellum days, the Tomcats, Nairobi's. Um, I mean, I can't even name all of them, but, you know, we was always grinding, man. You know, we yeah. came up kind of before the Facebook and the Instagram and stuff was so heavy. You know, it wasn't even, it wasn't even in existence during that time, you know what I'm saying? So... We was in the streets with it. We yeah. was we was performing like we literally would perform pretty much every day of the week, bro. Right. You know, for no money. Like me and Philly Station and a couple other guys, we was hitting the streets and hitting the clubs, performing back to back to back. So I look back now, that groundwork uh, was necessary for people to know me and acknowledge my right. the work that I put in. But it's always been about the music and just getting better and putting the music out, but. I just say, man, just grinding. It definitely wasn't an overnight thing to start being able to perform with, you know, people like Bum B, AZ, or whatever. Them just blessings that God has been giving me since I um, kind of made that transition. And not kind of, all the way made that transition and representing for God. Right. And he's just been sending blessings my way, man, for real. Yeah, and we're going to talk about that transition, too. Like, <laughs> yeah, we're going to yeah. Yeah, we go there. Uh, but tell me a little bit about your experience with Bumby, like sharing the stage with that cat. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is obviously a legend. Yeah. He's going to go down as, as one of the greatest. Yeah. How was that experience for you? Did you get to interact with him? Tell me about that. I didn't get to interact with him, to be honest with you, man. Um, I don't know about, about this uh, time that's coming up in December. But the last time I performed with him, I performed with him twice before. We did Trees with Premier Live Entertainment. Shout out to Smooth Vega. We did the show at Trees and um, uh, we rocked it, man. It was it was it was a great experience, bro. It was a sold out event. My first time ever being a part of a sold out event like that. Uh, the, the crowd was bananas. Uh, trees got a great sound system, so it was just the energy was was through the roof and. Uh, the whole neighborhood came out, like all my partners came out, everybody came out, man. We had a great time, and Bond got up there and did what he do. He, he rocked it. It was, yeah. it was amazing, but that was my first time seeing him perform like that. You know? Right. So I was like, I'm just sitting back like, wow. And then he started doing the classics that I just grew, that I grew up to. So I'm in the crowd like the fans, rapping along with him. And then he gets to perform, and he's like, yo, tonight was a special night. He's like, I don't know what it is, but tonight was a very special night. So that made, that put the step on it for me. For you, yeah. And, um, you know, we brought the most people out that night, so we got invited to come to San Antonio and open up for him again. So a lot of bad stuff happened that day in San Antonio, so the, the show was kind of somber, but uh, we got through it and came back to the D. Right. Peace. So,
that's still like a, a crazy thing, like a good crazy, you know, to be a yeah. part of. Yeah. So you were kind of going that way. I'm gonna steal it from you, and I want to know about the transition because a lot of people don't know like the hip hop, what style of hip hop, what you were talking about when you started, and then like you just came back as like a whole nother person on fire for God, and then like not just that, but great stuff started happening for you as well. So like, what sparked that? How did that even happen for you? Well, I would say um, speaking directly to the music, I think. Uh, Musically, we just was talking about what we went through. And most rappers, you always want to stress the truth or say things, you know, just put metaphors and lines together. But, you know, coming up, we all had our own story to tell. And that's what the music was primarily about, reality rap. Um, and then, you know, when the streets are doing what you do to get money and, 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 and to make things happen, it comes out in the music in certain different ways and, and it, it, it creates a certain energy. And I was getting, for me personally, I was getting involved in energies that I just couldn't, it wasn't for me no more, you know what I'm saying? I look back at my time growing up and all the shootouts that we was involved in in commerce, to be quite honest with you, a lot of, most of them I had nothing to do with, but you know, it's, it's we all family, so, and, and that was when I was younger, so, starting to look back at that, I was like, yo, I've been doing music a long time. And to me, that was the common denominator of, of a lot of stuff that was happening. Like, yo, I need to change something. Right. I still love doing music. You just but didn't know, like, what it, yeah. yeah I, ain't, I ain't no millionaire off of this. I ain't making no money off of this. So it's like, I'm going to really say how I feel, especially now, because how I feel has changed. My perspective has changed. My, my outlook has changed because of my relationship with God. And what brought that um, um, into play is a, is a, is a, a collection of circumstances. Um, and I'm not gonna go through each one of them, but it's a collective of things that, uh, that push me into a corner. And I, like, I always like to say, you know, my grandmother is like the greatest thing to me, but she couldn't save me from this. Money couldn't do it. My woman couldn't do it. Nothing could do it. Nothing could do it, you know what I'm saying? It was something that I that I was drowning in. And um, I remember, you know, my grandmama told me about this man named Jesus. And, and I was like, you know, I always, when, when things get tough, I always say his name. But to say his name and to actually live by what he, what he stands for is two different things. And so, um, we out of my neighborhood, man, so, you know. Yeah, it's tight. But, um, to say his name and then to, to actually live by his words, two different things. So when I accepted that and he came into my life because of the situation I was in, I asked for him to come in and he came in. And it's an experience that can't explain it. I never try to convince people to believe in God or follow what I follow, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's something that has to happen on the inside. And I realized that because my grandmother had introduced me to God, but the belief came from my own personal experience and something that I had to get in the darkest corner of my world, you know what I'm saying? It's something that's it's a personal thing, so you can't, it's a spiritual thing, so I can't, you can't put that on nobody. That's something that you have to get for yourself. And so I got it for myself, and uh, since then, to fast forward, there's been a lot of things that happened, but man, I tell you, it's been amazing. It's been an amazing journey in a short period of time, you know? I started um, just being blessed, man. And it ain't always about the blessing, but I started getting peace and joy and understanding and wisdom and learning how to handle stuff in the midst of stuff happening, learn how to control myself and and, and, uh, and respond. Yeah, what'd you say about that before respond. we before we set up the camera? You was talking about is how you, how you reacted to things yeah. or, or something like that. Because that's what life is about, you know? You cannot stop things from happening this world is impossible it's gonna always be stuff happening but you can't control how you respond to it that's the serenity prayer the wisdom is knowing the difference you know what i'm saying things that i have the power to change which is myself people i can't change people i can't change another person's understanding but i can change the way i respond to it and it ain't being a sucker it ain't being soft the hood teach you that because the hood was bred up by people that didn't understand that you know what I'm saying? And if the leaders don't have understanding, then they can't teach the ones under them understanding. You feel me? So, you know, you have to um, understand that, for me anyway, being positive in the midst of negativity has benefited me. I've profited from it. So, 
It's just like anything that a person profits from, whether it be you hustling, you profit from it, be loyal to that. I've profited from this, so I'm loyal to this. This, this has uh, brought me through situations that nothing else could, and I'm thankful for that, and I'm a loyal person. I yeah. put it on my hand, not just as a tad. I'm, I, I'm a loyal person. People that know me know that. If you real with me, I'm always real with you. You know what I'm saying? So, or whether I just fall back. So, that's kind of how it came about. And since then, I've just been, been moving and grooving. The guy been blessing me, you know. And I feel like it's just the beginning, to be honest with you. So, do, do you ever get thoughts of like saying, okay, is is this hip hop I'm making gospel rap or is it rap? Because like I seen the full transition, like lyrically, you don't even cuss yeah, on like on records, and it's like you're actually coming with like sermons, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, on yeah, some yeah, of the yeah, records, yeah. you know, some of them, you know, hip hop, but like you definitely coming with real. So it's like, have you ever like, do you think about that at the time? Do you say, am I a gospel rapper or am I a rapper? Or like, you know, how do you see yourself now when you pushing that message as well? Well, you know. As I said, I'm a musician and I love making music. And my understanding of music at this point is more so when you hear a beat and you pick up the pen and something comes out that, that, that you feel in your heart, then that's music, you know? Really? I don't get caught up in bars. I don't get caught up in who got the dopest verses. And that's cool, like that's the culture, I understand that. But for me, and for me, the way I am, Music is music. Like if you make great music, however you deliver it, and I can vibe to it and relate to it, and it, I can get something from it, then I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna do that. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't look for the, oh, is he doing this? Is it, is it structured like that, or is it like that? Or but you know, with the label. With me, it's more so content. Right, you right, know, it's right. More so content, like what you're talking about. The game is so much. You know, we, we, we do what, we do what makes money. You know what I'm saying? So. A lot of times when you do what makes money, you get caught up in the rhythm of the road. But, you know, to be an artist is to be original. The network, you know, to be honest with you, that was created with that foundation of originality. Like, you know, you have to be yourself and be talking about something. And, you know, be real with it. So, it's embedded in me. So, my music is really about my life and how I feel. Yeah. And, um, you know... At this point of my life, it's, it's it's about the music, but it's less about the music. It's really less about the music now. Yeah. You know, it's like more about like the message. Or? It's more about the message, and it's about the PVO. Yeah, the positive vibe only. How know? did that start? Like, how did that start? I seen the, the shirts, the hats. Mm -hmm. I seen I went to Commerce. It's like every other person will have a PVO shirt on. Like, so that was like crazy. So, like, you could tell that that's it's a real movement. It's not just somebody pushing shirts. So, mm -hmm. like, how did that come about? How did you get people to buy onto it so quickly? Like, tell me the story behind that. Well, um, the PVO is something that I got directly from God um, through my journey and through uh, studying and stuff like that and just listening to positive people. Um, when you make that transformation, and, and by the way, you know, I had when it got, it's another story, but I had when it got baptized, right? Yeah. Like, kind of within the last couple of years because I had never done it. And I was always ashamed to do it because I was like, you know, I'm being church be wet. You know, I was just thinking <laughs> yeah. crazy. My mind was thinking against me, but I felt like, you know, I was denying Jesus every time I did that. So I made the decision to go ahead and do that. And when I did that, other talents started to come up. Things that I didn't know I had a talent to do. You know what I'm saying? That's one thing that I learned is that when you get with God, he'll expose so much. You know what I'm saying? So many blessings that, that you have inside. You have everything you need to be successful. It's right inside who you are. But you got to get with the right connection for it to be opened up. And so um, the PVO it just kind of was, you know, being with God is being positive. Yeah. Come on, man. It's, it's a lifestyle. So that, that, it goes hand in hand. You know what I'm saying? So that's where the positive vibe stuff came from. And because um, life, life is about vibes and about energies. And so that's where the positive vibe stuff came from. And then I made a hat and just put the PVR on it. And somebody, they, they, was, they was liking it. They was like, yo, what that stand for? And so then my guy, uh, Daniel the Creator, uh, Daniel Bradley, he made, the, he made the logo for me. And then, you know, we've been pushing it. We got the website, the pvolife.com. And, um, you know, you can get t-shirts, hats, everything, you know what I'm saying? And we, and we are continuing to build. Um, I didn't really have to do much to get people to uh, 
get down with it because it ain't nothing new. It just need to be reminded. It's yeah, like yeah. Being positive is really you, you learn it as a kid. That's why the scriptures say you got to be as kids to be. You gonna have to be as kids to be in the presence of the Lord. You know, you know, because when you a kid, most people, most time you you positive. You got you got friends of all different colors. You don't see color. You don't see money. Yeah. You don't see status. You don't see none of that. Y'all just friends. You know what I'm saying? That's positive. And so. It wasn't hard to get people on to it. It's just kind of reminding people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I say it's bigger than the hats and the shirts for me. It's really the message. And this was what's important for me right now. And the music is just fun. It's back to having fun. It's back to being creative. It's easy now. It ain't no pressure. I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to do nothing. But Yeah, I was just about to ask yeah, you. That. I was about to say now. Yeah. Does it like feel better to go in the booth now that you're rapping yeah. about something? Yeah. They got like a, you know what I'm saying, like a real potency yeah. meaning to yeah. it. Yeah. It feels, There's no pressure, you know? No pressure. It feels like art now. You know what I'm saying? As a kid, I was an artist. I was nice with the pencil drawing and stuff. So it feels like that again. Yeah. You know, I'm not drawing, but I'm, I'm using the words. Yeah. And that feels like freedom, and and and, and yeah, I'm in a good spot. We got a studio, you know. Yeah, tell me about that. Tell me about like, tell me how that came apart. Um, like I remember we talked. Like, I don't remember how long ago it was, but you was like, "Hey, I'm about to open this spot," and mm -hmm. I was like, "Crap, that happened fast." So tell me about that. Like, how did all that work? Well, the Villa Cooler uh, whole situation came from um, just positive thinking. Again, um, Villa Cooler was already created by uh, London Jacobs. He's one of the business owners. Um, he's from California and he was living in Mesquite. But my guy Cam King, we went to college together, but I hadn't seen this dude in I don't know how many years. It's been forever, man. And so he, he, he was hitting me up and then we connected and he took me over to London. So London had the studio over there at his crib and I rapped for him. And he loved the music and he was like, yo, it was right down the street. The studio I was going to was like an hour. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so he was like right down the street. He was like, bro, I love your stuff. Just come record with me. You know, don't don't worry about nothing. So I started recording. Then we did the worldwide video, shot the video with um first our media or whatever. And and then we just started talking about the studio and just talking about building every day. We just was talking about it, man. You know, you know, I was around about five guys, and they was just all talking about the same thing. You know what I'm saying? They was all saying, "Yeah, we gonna do it. This how we gonna do it. This when we gonna do it." And boom, 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 got the building in the south, in the hood, and there was nothing inside the building. I promise you, just like the concrete floor. And none of us have done construction. We didn't have money to pay for construction, so you know, we went and got the wood and the nails, and, and we got it in ourselves. We put the floor in. You know, and got it done and opened our doors up. Almost been a year now, rocking and rolling. 3631 Colonial, South Dallas, man. Pull up, get a session in. We got the video room. We got the radio station, Villa Cooler uh, Radio. Um, and we got the clothes there, two PVOs also there. So you can get it online at pvolife.com or you can come in and get some stuff if you're in the South at 3631 Colonial. Yeah, and I remember going to the studio in that session. Like, by the way, like if they can hear me, it was amazing. Like yeah. you guys set it up, and I, I didn't even know you guys built it up from the bottom up. You so even hearing that is like golly, because y'all did that. It's God. Yeah, it's God. because I never would be probably a part of that. My mentality before, like, nah, I ain't finna put no money in that. Just look at this, look at this, man. Like I don't know nothing about putting no floor together or uh, putting up walls and, and laying sheet rock. But like I say, you get a, I had a group of people that were determined to reach a goal and to see it happen, let me know. Like sowing positive seeds and getting around the right people, everybody on the same page, everybody uplifting each other, motivating each other, being a blessing, not a burden. Amazing things could happen, man. Amazing things. You know, it's the same thing that we did with um the unity in the community event, you know? It's the same thing with that, man. Just sowing a positive seed, and then from that, look, we got a brand new park. Yeah, tell me, it, in commerce, correct? In commerce, Tell yeah. me tell me about this last year's, because uh, I heard this past year, I was on the road, so I couldn't come. Mm -hmm. So tell me, they said it was really, really good. Tell me about it. It was, this this past year was, was a great turnout. Uh, this year we had a live band. Um, you know, we had, we had great food again. Um, 
had more bounce houses and, and water slots for the kids. Uh, we had turkey legs, you know what I'm saying? We had everything. It was baseball games. And like I said, we had the brand new uh, basketball court, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to uh, Daryl. Daryl Ferro, I believe. My guy, um, the city manager down there, he, he was part of the uh, movement to get the get the uh, court and stuff redone. So and I think that's just the beginning, man. It's just the beginning, you know, but that just goes to show, like I say, sowing a positive seed, you know, nobody was involved in that. It was, it was really a community event, you know what I'm saying? And for the community to come together, you know, and from that, it's been blessing after blessing after blessing. Right. So it's like, you know, same thing when you out there in the streets and you doing stuff you don't need to be doing. And then Quan would come back around and be like, dang, at least for me, it's like every time I would do something that I didn't have no business doing, Quan would come right back. Yeah, hit you be right like, in the face. Like, like, yeah. See? see? <laughs> yeah. But I thank God that my grandma, you know, brought me up the way she did and I was able to see some of that stuff, you know, and it eventually, like, okay, you know, I, I'm trying to figure out how it works. Yeah. And then the same thing on this side. So positive, all this time come, you reap that. That's sure real. So we we understand now how you started, how you transitioned, and mm -hmm. then like all the fruits of like just the goodness that's been happening in your life. Yeah. Um, so could you tell me like before we wrap it up, counting your goals with the music going into this last quarter, fourth quarter, possibly going into the first quarter of next year? Um, my goal musically is just to continue, um, you know, hitting the booth. Um, I do have a lot of music I've recorded recently. Yeah. I got enough for a project. I was gonna put out something called Table Made. Um, I'm still debating on that, but right now I'm just recording, man. I have no uh, plans to really put anything out right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we do got the show with Bun coming up. We got the clothing line that we're really pushing. And the PVO is really, the goal for that is to be a non-profit eventually. We want to start really being big in the community. You know, we want to start doing stuff to be a benefit to somebody in another way, you know. Like I said, music is important, but then it's got me in, in the presence of some good people and able to do some things that I otherwise wouldn't have been able to do if I wasn't involved in music. But that stuff that we did in the community, I like that kind of stuff, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So the PVO is really what I want to push. Um, and I pray that that eventually turns into a nonprofit uh, musically, you know. We're gonna keep on doing what we do, man. You'll see something. Yeah. What's yeah. up? Kobe Savage just did a live interview with Threes Up TV, man. Salute to the real, man. Y'all check me out, KobeSavage.com, ThePPOLife.com, VillaCoolerRadio.com. Salute.